Hey guys, my name is Daniel. I'm here once again with you from the Challenger Learning Center with another fun and exciting activity that you can do at home. Now today we're going to be, be making our own thermometers. Cool, right? Um, this is a store-bought thermometer. Just for reference, we're going to be using this to um, help label our different values on our homemade th uh, thermometer. That way we can make it as accurate as we can. Um, I just want to walk you through this. Uh, thermometers have been used for centuries, for hundreds of years, to of course read temperature. Now how they work, um, this one has two uh, uh, temperature scales, the, the uh, Fahrenheit scale on the right, Celsius on the left, and there's a reservoir or like a holding space for our liquid inside our thermometer. Now what happens is when the air um, around it or its environment heats up, it helps or it makes the liquid expand and that's what makes it go up this small skinny glass tube that's in this uh, uh, version of thermometer and so it expands it goes up the glass tube it goes up to a higher level and that's how we get higher readings of a temperature okay on the flip side if it's colder um, then the liquid inside it contracts or it kind of compresses down some and it makes it fall within this glass tube and therefore we have a lower temperature reading okay um, very simple thing but yet very powerful too and we're going to be making our own out of these items right here we have a sharpie here or some kind of marker that you have at the house to label our uh, our temperature levels on our water bottle our water bottle will form the main body of our thermometer um, i'll get to what's inside in just a bit uh, we have some food to dye here. I'm choosing red, of course, because that's your standard thermometer liquid um, look and, and whatever color is typically used. But again, you can use whatever, whatever color that you want. This is all up to you, whatever you want to do. Alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is our liquid inside our bottle. Now, quick note about, uh, about this rubbing alcohol. Safety first at all times, okay? This is not safe to drink. Don't be messing with it. Work with an adult when using this, okay? So some very important notes there. Um, safety needs to be first at all times, so keep that in mind, okay? We also have a funnel if you have at the house that'll help you pour in the rubbing alcohol into the bottle. Um, our clear tube, if you will, of our thermometer is gonna be a clear straw. Make sure it is um, straight. It's a straight straw, not a curved or um, um, kitty straw, you know that it bends or whatever. Make sure it's a straight straw. Make sure it's clear as well so you can see through and read whatever temperature it is. Um, and also, I will say, see if you can get the longer ones. Um, I have one right here that's a little shorter. You can see if it's shorter, it's not as tall as the bottle. So you want some of it to stick out the top, if at all possible. That way it doesn't kind of get trapped in there. And um, so make it as or get one that's as tall as you can and as long as you can as well. Now, to hold our straw contraption in place for our thermometer, um, it's recommended to use modeling clay. Um, I don't know how many of you will have this at home. It's okay if you don't. There's no sweat for it. Um, I found that Play-Doh works as well. So any kind of clay, substance, crafting clay, whatever you have at the house, um, it just needs to be something that can help hold our straw in place. Okay, let's see. I think that covers everything that we need before we jump on into the main activity. So let's go ahead and get building, shall we? Um, I already have this prepped for you before I came on with you guys. Um, I went ahead and poured in using the funnel. I put the funnel on top of the bottle like this and poured the rubbing, al rubbing alcohol inside our bottle. Filled it up to about a quarter of the way up inside the bottle. And I put uh, two drops of red food dye inside. I swirled it around like this. I also stuck my straw inside to help um, stir it up a little bit, just like this. Again, be very careful with this. Uh, we need to keep in mind safety first, okay? Um, so that is the first few steps of making our thermometer. Now, like I said, we need to um, make sure that this bottle is airtight. We do not want any air getting inside the bottle because that will mess up our thermometer readings and how it works. Okay, so to seal it, to make it airtight, we have our Play-Doh. Again, you can use modeling clay if you have it at the house, um, but Play-Doh I found works just as well. So we really need to seal this 
as tightly as we can. Um, quick note, make sure that the straw does not touch the bottom of the bottle. If it does touch the bottom, it won't allow the alcohol to travel up and down the straw. Okay, so make sure that it's just above the bottom of the bottle. And I'm gonna put my Play-Doh or my clay, whatever you have at the house, at the top. Make sure not to kink the straw as well. And do not cover the top of the straw. Make sure that the top of the straw is still free. You just wanna seal up the main opening of the bottle. You might just need to kind of press into it. Again, make the bottle as airtight as we can get. I'm gonna get some more about right in here. Um, be patient with this because this is very important. This is key to making sure that your thermometer works properly. Okay, also make sure that the straw is about vertical, as straight up and down as we can get it. Okay, I think we're about there. Let's see. I'm gonna actually let it sit for a minute. Uh, we're gonna be testing out with different temperatures of water, and we're gonna be using ice um, to label on our thermometer different temperature readings so it's very important that we kind of let it sit let it adjust to its environment before we actually do a final labeling on our bottle so i'm just gonna let this sit for a few minutes i'll be back in just a bit okay i've let this sit for a few minutes um, just to adjust to our room temperature from here you're more than welcome to label with the sharpie um, whatever room temperature you have in your house um, I'm actually gonna skip that for now and actually focus on doing, I have a bowl here of warm water. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna put this in here to see um, what temperature we can label on our bottle, whatever this warm water temperature is. And then I'm gonna actually pull a bottle, or not a bottle, a bowl of ice out and do the same thing with that, okay? Just make sure that between every step, if you label the room temperature, let it adjust to its environment for a few minutes, just let it sit. For this warm water, we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes, let it adjust, same thing with the ice. Be patient with it, go step by step. And we're actually gonna also be using our store-bought thermometer. I'm gonna actually stick this in the water too, and also the ice, um, and that will help us label our thermometer as accurately as we can, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, and I'm actually gonna stick our store bought in here too. Make sure that both reservoirs are in the water. I'm gonna let this do its thing for a few minutes. Remember, you need to be patient. Let it do its thing. Let it adjust to the environment and the new temperature that it's in. And I will return in just a minute, so hold tight. Okay, I've let this sit for a bit in the warm water. I put both the store bought thermometer as well as the homemade thermometer in this bowl or um, glass plate of warm water. Make sure, again, don't make it too hot because it could melt the bottle and your alcohol, if it's too hot, could go too high and out the top. So you don't want that to happen. So just a heads up about that, not to make it too hot. So this is just warm water. My, if you want to come over here, look at the, um, store-bought thermometer, it says it's pretty much right on 90 degrees on the dot. So I'm going to use my Sharpie now to label my homemade thermometer. And make sure when you label these that when you put your tip marks that your eye level with the line or with the liquid, um, that way you get as best of an accurate reading as you can get. Um, I think we are about here with 90 degrees. So I'm gonna put my little tip mark there and careful not to squeeze it. If you squeeze it, the level does tend to go up. So I'm gonna be very careful. I did see it's gonna be at this level here. Um, and I'm gonna put 90 degrees right here. You can see the liquid's going up because I am squeezing the bottle a little bit. But this is the tip mark at 90 degrees. Um, if I let this sit, the level will fall. I've been watching over the last few minutes um, just be careful not to squeeze the bottle too much, but this is my tick mark for 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure to put your units when you label that. 
I'm gonna do the same thing with a bowl of ice and I'll get back to you in just a minute. Burr, it's kind of cold over here. Look at this. I have a bowl of ice surrounding our uh, homemade thermometer as well as our store-bought thermometer. Let's take a look at the temperature on the store-bought thermometer. Take a look at that. It's about 34. It's close to freezing. Granted, yes, we have the air that's around the ice, um, but it's close to freezing. And 34 is pretty dang cold, right? So let's go ahead and I'm going to carefully, without squeezing, Remember, if you squeeze, it kind of shoots up the straw. I kind of made my tip mark ahead of time, but I think it's even colder, actually. I think it's down in here. Let's see if I can draw this. Because it's wet from the ice. Okay, that's about the tip mark where, remember, you want to be at eye level. It's about the tip mark of 34 degrees, about right in there. I think that's about close, right there. This tip mark was about 35, 30, it was a little before I pulled it out, so it may have been a little warmer by a degree or two, but this one is about 34, so I'm going to label this one 34, don't forget your units, degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we have 90 degrees here, 34 here. Um, I actually did a test run of 100 degree water, it actually ended up being about up in here, um, underneath the Play-Doh, so I couldn't label that. But feel free to, like I, like I said, feel free to do different tests. Label your room temperature inside your house. Um, it could vary from like 65, maybe 70, 75, just based on your family. But that would um, add another tip mark in your thermometer. Take it outside as well, okay? Um, you can go in the shade, you can go in the sun and see how those temperatures vary. Although I will recommend take a store-bought thermometer for accuracy to make sure that you label your temperatures as accurate as you can, okay? Because you want it to be as accurate as possible. It's very, very important that you don't just put random numbers down. It has to be as close to accurate as you can get. Now, if you're outside in the shade, in the sun, even in the house, remember like we said, let it sit for a few minutes, let it adjust to the environment, the new temperature, and that way, again, it's as accurate as you can get. Okay, to review, remember we said that warmer temperatures cause the liquid inside your thermometer to expand and therefore rise inside our tube or our straw in this case. Colder temperatures cause the liquid to contract or kind of compress in some way, um, and that allows it to fall within your straw or your tube um, in your thermometer. So that's how that works and that's what's going on here. Pretty cool stuff. Um, some things that you can experiment. You can try different sizes of straws, different widths, different lengths. See how that plays a role in your thermometer tip marks, your readings, your performance of your thermometer. Um, we use straight rubbing alcohol. Remember safety first, so work with an adult don't drink it, don't mess with it. Um, but there is something else that you could try. Some websites that I found um, call for equal parts rubbing alcohol, equal parts water mixed together. You could try that, you could try straight water. The caution I have to say to you is if you incorporate water, remember water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So if any part of it starts to freeze as you get close to freezing or at or at freezing, that could mess up the performance of um, your thermometer and, you know, uh, it, it, in allowing the liquid to travel because it won't be straight liquid anymore if it starts to freeze. So just a heads up about that. Alcohol, a uh, little fun fact, it freezes at negative 128 Fahrenheit, negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit, unlike water, which freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see that alcohol doesn't freeze um, at it freezes at a much lower temperature therefore that's why I use this so it wouldn't freeze um, as quickly but yeah there's some ideas that you can use have fun with this let us know what worked best if the play-doh works for you um, what different liquids worked what what you did to test out your, your thermometer you can always stick this in the freezer for a little bit um, just be cautious of not letting things get too hot, you know, that the alcohol um, mixture would, you know, go too high. Just be cautious of that. But 
that's about it. Um, again, work with an adult, safety first, don't play with the alcohol, it's not meant for that. Just be careful with this stuff and keep in touch with us. We would love to hear from you for sure. Um, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys learned a lot and I will see you guys next time.